hi guys welcome back to the channel in today's uh, video i'm going to be starting a series on what to check for you know as a, as a layman not even as a mechanic just as somebody who's who's got a vehicle and knows very little about it but wants to maintain the vehicle so there's a couple of things we're going to check and i'm going to start the series um with uh, a coolant check we're going to be having a look and uh, what we're going to be doing is focusing on the coolant reservoir and of course the cooling system so it's not going to be very complicated i don't want to make this a series that is long and very boring to listen to i want this to be very simple and to the point but it's i want this to be something that everybody no matter what your level your skill level is whether you're beginner novice uh, expert mechanic and even you expert mechanics out there please correct me if i'm wrong on things and please leave comments and uh, let let me know what you guys also think so one of the reasons why we check the coolant condition is because in the engine itself there are two things that are at play at the moment number one is the electrical current that comes from the battery and number two is there's obviously water inside the system that's inside the engine and that's designed to cool the engine so when you combine water and electricity or an electrical current you get what is known as electrolysis so in this case the way to prevent electrolysis uh, because electrolysis is something that actually eats at the metal and what you'll find is that you'll see that when it comes to the cylinder head uh, and also the block itself but particularly the cylinder head you'll find that many cylinder heads uh, they suffer from pitting and pitting is fine little holes or corrosion of the internal areas uh, the internal water channels of the actual um, uh, engine and cylinder head itself and when that happens that's when you normally get your heat gasket failure so or you get a blown heat gasket not the only cause but that is one of the reasons that it can happen so in order to prevent the, the system from being uh, el electrified if you want to call it that you have to have coolant you have to have and the coolant that we normally use inside the engine is, is, is water based but you can't just have water you've got to have something added to that and the thing that you add to that is antifreeze and that is why antifreeze is one of the most important things that you need to put in your engine if you don't put antifreeze in the engine then what's going to happen is you're going to find that the engine over time is going to be corroded in internally and you won't see it but one day you will just discover it so this is the real reason why we're going to check the coolant today so let's go ahead and continue with the video so we can check the condition of the coolant so the test we're going to do today is going to be to determine the efficacy of the coolant in the system and to do that we're going to do a very simple test that involves using a multimeter have a cloth on hand and your reservoir your uh, coolant reservoir that's basically what you need to do so if you've got a radiator the best thing there is um, you can do the test exactly the same way but make sure that nothing is touching the, the probe that you put into the radiator doesn't touch any of the metal parts of the radiator that is vitally important so let's see how we do this here we go so the first thing you want to do is to make sure that the vehicle is at operating temperature so take it for a drive come back let it cool a bit don't just open up and because as you know the coolant reservoir is going to be under pressure so give it some time let it cool down and then uh, after about 20 minutes or so we can conduct this test first thing we're going to do is to open up the coolant reservoir put your cap safe one side uh, the next thing we want to do is to take our volt meter, our multimeter, and just set it to the section would be the, the DC, and that's AC for those of you who are familiar with uh, electrical currents. But that's the one you're looking for, the DC, and you just want to set it to 20, 20 volts DC. And what we can just do is just check if this is working. So good test to do is just to put it onto your battery terminals and make sure you've got your required 12 volts make sure you've got your uh, leads in the right place this is the negative here and that's a positive over there and once you touch it there we're gonna see we're gonna get a reading of 12.52 volts which is good so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, insert our, our positive 
probe into the coolant. Just let the tip go in, try not to get the whole probe in there depending which one you're using. But uh, in this case that would be the thing to do. And what we will do now is we're going to touch the, the negative probe to the negative terminal and we're going to see what's going to happen. Okay, here we go, so let's, let's touch our negative probe to our negative battery terminal. And what you'll see is we're getting a reading and the reading is 0 0.03. And uh, that is much uh, better than the reading that, uh, the, the minimum reading that is, uh, or at least the maximum reading that is required, which is 0 0.33. Uh, in this case, we are 0 0.02, so we are well below the, the, the maximum or the minimum coolant level uh, conductivity. What I'm going to do now is just touch it. I'm going to touch it to one of the um, bolts at the bottom of the engine, which is also a grounding point, so we can see what the reading is there. And there it is 0 0.01. So that's good. Okay, let's attach it to the earthing strap. 0 0.02, 0 0.01. It's obviously going to fluctuate depending upon the temperature of the coolant, but uh, yeah, we will be. So now that's it, we can close up and we've conducted our test and we've uh, established that our coolant is in a good condition. So if your coolant is below the 0 0.33 mark, then you know that you need to replace your coolant. So coming up in the next uh, episode in the series of, of tips, the next subject we're going to cover is the lifeblood of your, of your engine. And that of course is engine oil. We'll be going over the pros and cons of oil. Um, as I said before, this is not going to be a very long explanation. It's going to be about the importance of oil and what the role of oil is in your engine and how to make sure that this oil is, is checked periodically and checked properly.